All right, if you would open your Bibles to Malachi. I got you, brother bud. Malachi 3 tonight. Malachi chapter 3. Um, what, uh, we're going to read verses 6 through 12. Uh, I know we did this when we did our study back in 2021, back in 2021. Uh, but uh, uh, listen, uh, I know it's going to get worse out there in our country with the things that our government is wanting to do financially. And so uh, I just want to warn us together uh, and remind us what God said about our finances and his work. And so I just want to give us a warning or a reminder uh, about it because uh, I've you know, I have some uh, groups I'm a member of on the on not on, on not on say I'm not a member of no you know these groups out there, but on Facebook and uh, fellow pastors and uh, uh, they're seeing some uh, some things happening in their church and uh, and there's a lot you know what do y'all say think about this and all this and and so we we are no listen we are not an exception to the rule though God has been blessing our church. Uh, for the last uh, four or five months, uh, and so uh, we need to be reminded of what God says about the almighty dollar, right? So Malachi chapter 3, if you would stand as we honor God with the reading of his word. Malachi chapter 3, we're going to begin in verse number 6. Malachi 3, verse 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, I will not op uh, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that even shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer of your, for, uh, for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit uh, before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a, a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Well, let's pray. Father, as we are to the preaching and teaching part of the service, Father, once again, I ask that you would empty me of myself. Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Spirit that I may preach, thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, I ask tonight that you would help us, Lord. I know that uh, any time money is mentioned, Lord, uh, we start tightening up and uh, our mind goes elsewhere because it seems like every time we turn around, something's going on. Got to spend money on this, got to spend money on that, Lord, both at home and, and at church. And Lord, I just ask that you would help us to stay focused tonight. That you would not, that we would not allow Satan, Lord, to buy for any time, or that you would help us as we study tonight your word, and remind us, Lord, of some principles that we need to already have instilled in our lives. Lord, I just ask that you would have your will and your way tonight. For it is in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. May God bless the reading of His word. I know in 2021, we were in the middle of COVID, right? There were a lot of churches that were suffering financially because, well, I mean, there was a lot of churches that were not allowed to gather in certain states. And it, it, it was an extremely dangerous time in our nation. Uh, 
And it's still, a, I mean, even now it's being, it's a dangerous time in our nation to preach sound doctrine. I mean, it's, they're out there trying to take the church's 501c3, uh, the IRS, if they can, you know, do whatever they can to to do those things. And it's, it's a very dangerous time and, uh, to preach sound doctrine uh, from the scriptures. And so, uh, you know, we need to remember that. Uh, and so, Israel, of course, I know we're speaking of Israel in Malachi chapter 3, but the principles uh, still can apply to us as believers. And so, and, and God here, uh, he's talking about God robbers. That's the name of the message, or the title of the message, God robbers. Uh, and so, you know, if we look at our own lives, we could probably look in areas in our own life that we rob God in certain areas in uh, in our own life. We might put him in a box and say, you know, in this little area, you know, I, I, I'm okay with. Or We may not even say that. We may not even think about it, about putting God in a box, but we do. And uh, so uh, is, how Israel responds to God is a result of their sin, and how we respond to God is also a result of our sin. Every, it doesn't matter what subject it is, whether it's money or whatever it is. How we respond to God it usually is a result of sin because they don't see their, their problem. Israel doesn't see their problem. Remember, as we are studying the book of Mark, Israel can't see that they're sinners because they, they, they thought Jesus, the Messiah, was going to come as a warrior slash king to deliver them out of Roman bondage and to give their power back to Israel. And they totally missed the boat when the prophets were prophesying of what kind of person he would be that would come and uh, they they couldn't see that god would come from heaven to earth be born of a virgin and be a god man they they, they just couldn't see that and so uh, israel didn't of course we know israel didn't respond to jesus very well and when god uh, comes to them and tells them about their sin a lot of times they didn't respond well to him either and we need to watch how we respond to god when God is speaking to us. And so, uh, well, you know, in verse number uh, 6, the Lord says, For I am the Lord, I change not, since I don't change. Therefore, he's, that therefore, since I don't change, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Israel exists because of God. It's the only way they exist. And I'm going to, I mind you, the only reason we exist is because of God. And the only reason the Garth Road Baptist Church exists is because of the mercies and the grace of God. And so uh, we need to be thankful that God has given us a church to come together, uh, to, uh, to come together and to worship together, to sing praises together, collectively to be under the preaching of God's word together. And so, listen, uh, if, God changed, if God changed and was not faithful they would not have existed. Because remember, we were, we've been talking in Joshua and, uh, and, uh, and also going back into the Exodus uh, when we were covering Psalm 106 about how God wanted, said to Moses, let's just start over with you. Remember? He said that a couple of times to Moses, and, and Moses was like, uh, Lord, uh, we can't do that because, well, you're God, and... You know, you said that you were not you were going to do this, and uh, and God wanted to. You know, He repented, you know, and changed His mind and said, you know, yeah, we're not going to do this because of, of who He is and because of His name's sake. But listen, if God wasn't as faithful as if He wasn't faithful at all, uh, they wouldn't exist. And listen, if God wasn't as faithful and merciful to us, we still wouldn't exist, right? And so. God, God is always and has always been faithful to his promises. Even though Israel, uh, the children of Israel were disobedient and went chasing after other gods and, uh, and, and did all their mess, he was still faithful and brought them to the land that he had promised them. Right? Right? And, and I'm thankful that he is faithful because as unfaithful as I am, 
I'm still guaranteed heaven because of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for his, the faithfulness of him and his promises. And so uh, I'm thankful. We all ought to be thankful for his promises, how faithful he is to his promises. Uh, he is, I am the Lord. I change not. I'm thankful that God doesn't change from the Old Testament to the New Testament. He's still the same God uh, of both covenants. And so uh, God has continued to extend his hand towards Israel with mercy, hasn't he? Verse 7, even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances. We know this. Because remember, we, we discussed Psalm, we spent many, many weeks in Psalm 106 where the psalmist would go back and talk about what uh, some of the things that Israel had done. And when, when he would mention that, we would go back uh, into the Old Testament and dig up what the, the psalmist was saying. Yes, even from the fathers, when God brought them out of Egypt, they, were, they, they did not stay faithful to his ordinances. We know this, and so, but God has always extended his hand of mercy out. Uh, he goes, and, and, and you have not kept them. He says, return unto me, and I will what unto you? Return unto you. See, a lot of times when we get into sin, sometimes we get this mentality that I can't get back. There are people who will skip church and miss church for months at a time and not want to come back because, well, I can't go back now. What will people think? Who cares? Who cares? You, you go to church for the audience of one. Not me. Not your wife. Not your kids. For the Lord. So, listen, no, we, we, who cares if... We, listen, we might ask, where have you been? But we're not judging you. We're glad you're back. You need us. We need you. That's why God it that's why God it created the church. He knew we needed each other. And so God always extends his hand of mercy out. Doesn't matter how much we gotten how deep we've gotten into the riptide of sin, God always extends his hand of mercy out. We may have to pay the consequences of those sins, but his mercy's still there. And so he, he tells Israel, listen, even though you haven't been faithful to meet my ordinances, you don't ever keep them, return unto me, and I will return unto you. He always extends it out. You come, I'll come. Right? He, and it's what he always says. You come to me, I'll go to you. And so uh, God's mercy has been needed because of their covenant disloyalty. They were disloyal to the covenant they made God. Remember, we talked about this where, where the children of Israel, when Joshua said that you have done this, or Moses said you, that you, this is the way it's going to be. They read from the book, right? And the, the children of Israel said, we will do it. Right? We discussed this a few weeks ago. He said, they said, we will do it. They entered into the covenant with God, and yet they become disobedient to the covenant that they said that they would uphold. Right? And so even though they were disobedient, God said, you come to me, I will come back. You return unto me, I will return unto you. God has shown them truth, and they have chosen to go the other way. We can go back to Deuteronomy 28, right, where all the curses and the, uh, and the blessings. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. All those blessings that if they would stay faithful to God, they would follow God, they would uh, heed to his ordinances, then he would bless them. But if they didn't, all these curses. Well, so, God, he said, and so here he says uh, 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 that they are cursed, that they've been cursed. Uh, and so uh, we, they've been cursed because they've been disobedient to God. They need to return to him. But beloved, if you're all, if you're watching on live stream tonight, but uh, and you're afraid to come to church, listen. You need to return to God. You need to, for your sake. You need to return to Him, 
Israel, as he's talking to them, they need to return to him. We, when we're out in, in, in the muck, we need to return to God. If we don't, it's going to be a hard road to hoe. Listen, I, I've gardened. My grandpa had a green thumb. I've gotten that hoe. I've done that before. Been there, done that. And so listen, uh, it's a hard road to hoe if, you're, if you don't return back to the Lord. God continues to offer them mercy if they will return to him. But in Israel continues to have sinful ignorance. Wherein shall we return? Lord, we're still here in the land that you gave us. We haven't left. They have. Their hearts have left. Their hearts have left. They're, listen, there's Christians today. They will come to church week in and week out, and, and, and their heart's not in it. And, 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 and we'll say, listen, you, you, you need to return unto God. And you'll say, well, I've been here. Do you, not say, you know, I'm here every week. Physically, you may be here, but spiritually, you're not. Spiritually, you're elsewhere. You're at Minute Maid Park. You're at home in front of NASCAR. You're thinking about fish somewhere. You're thinking about this, or you're thinking about that. Spiritually, you're not here. Physically, yes, but no. Your heart's far from here. So Israel's like, we haven't left, but yet they had. That's why God says, return unto me. Bring your heart back to me, is what he's meaning to Israel. Israel continues to have sinful ignorance in response to God's mercy. And responding to God, how shall, how shall we return? Listen, you and I don't get to, we are not the evaluator of how the, re, the reality of, our, of the seriousness of our sin. You and I are not the evaluator. Well, it's not just that bad. No, 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 no. You and I don't get to evaluate that. Listen, remember, I've been saying this uh, for a couple of months. If it took one, a bite of one piece of fruit for, God to, for us to be separated from God because of sin, listen, we don't get to evaluate how bad our sin is. One piece of fruit for the entire human race kicked us out of the garden. We're not the evaluator of how serious our sin is. God is the evaluator. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are not the evaluator, folks. He is. So God, he shows their irreverence. Look at verse number 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. This should serve us as a warning. If you're giving to God, if you're already tithing and giving to God, you need to continue to tithe and give to God. If you're not tithing to God and giving to God, you need to return to that. Why? Because you're cursed. I'm going to tell you this as nicely as I can. God will get his money somehow. He will get his tithes somehow. Whether that's your car in the shop, whether it's replacing something at the house, going to the hospital, having to make it, God will get his cut. Hello? Oh, yeah. Let me tell you out. Let me help you out. I would rather willfully give it to him than him take it. I would rather give it to him freely than suffer what he would do to get it. So, listen. Here, Israel has defrauded the Creator. 
Israel, despite knowing God's law, continued to plead sinful ignorance. How have we robbed you? The thing is, is those who usually, those who know God's law and has a conscience, when they're disobedient, and that's brought to them, to their attention, they own up to it. Listen, a, a, a spiritually minded believer, when sin is brought up, whether it's indirectly from the pulpit, or whether it's one-on-one, a spiritual believer will own up to sin. See, they knew they weren't bringing their tithes into the storehouse. They knew they weren't doing it. But they didn't want to claim it either. So God states his case. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me even this whole nation. He lets them know the whole nation is robbing him by not giving their tithes. Folks, listen, it, I understand. I work a 40-hour job just like the rest of y'all. I understand how hard it is out there to pay bills. I have I have same bills y'all have. I know it's hard out there. So don't think that I, I I don't know what I'm talking about or I've been preaching too long. I can't, I can't you know, there's some people out there, well, the pastor, he just, he's just been full-time in ministry too long. He just, he's forgotten what it's like. No, I haven't. I go to work every day. I work eight hours a day just like you. I know what it's like. I know how hard. I know how what it feels like to fill up a tank of gas and have to come out of your. I know what it's like to spend two hundred dollars at the grocery store and walk out with five bags. I know that, but that doesn't give me the right to rob him. It gives me no right to rob God. My wife and I have it set up where it comes out automatically from our check, our banking account. Automatically goes comes out automatically to the church. Because let me tell you, I would willfully, I would rather willfully give it to him, than him have to take it some other way. I don't want to be cursed. Because I'm robbing him. And so the whole nation, robbing God. No, it's rough out there, but God still. I mean, do you think it's do you think it was easy, it's easier at this time? Or now? Do you think it's easier when Malachi was preaching? Or now? Folks, we had more money than they had. So think about that. The tithe was instituted by God, wasn't it? Before the law, Melchizedek tithed. So we can't say it's only an Old Testament law thing. Nope. Melchizedek tithe. Or it, was, it was given a tithe by Abraham. He instituted it uh, by God so that the priest could develop, uh, to be devoted to their work and to, the gatherings could be funded and that the poor could be cared for. There were three tithes that God instituted in Israel. You had the general tithe. You can look at Leviticus chapter 27 and see that the general tithe. All right. Then they had a sacred tie, a sacred meal with a Levite in, in Deuteronomy 14. And then they had a three year tithe when they would use to help the poor out. And you can look at that in Deuteronomy chapter 14. So there were three different tithes that Israel had. And, and so, uh, listen, would you like to have three different tithes come, have to come in? Having 30% taken out? give 30% back to God or whatever it might be no the tithes were meant to serve the needs of those who served at the tabernacle numbers 18 to take care of them because they didn't have much uh, time to provide for their 
uh, material needs. Listen, they weren't supposed to go out and work, were they? The priests? They weren't supposed to go out and do anything. They were to remain in the tabernacle and do the work. So, how, well, how were they taken care of? Well, God instituted that they would create this tithe so that the priests would be taken care of. The people would tithe and the Levites would, dis, would, would, would give to the priests. The pri- listen, the priests tithed off the tithe that they were given. And so, listen, we, we, we need to understand that it's important that we give of our tithes and our offerings. God here is claiming they're experiencing these curses in De- from Deuteronomy chapter 28 for their covenant breaking. They're cursed because they are not doing what they agreed to do. But he also, a well, great thing about God, he, he, he's, he's not only going to show you where you're wrong, he's going to tell you how to get right too. Verse 10, God shows Israel how to correct the problem. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now wherewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. You know how you want to how to correct your, your, the curse you're under, Israel? I'll bring it in. Folks, you, you, as believers, you want to correct what God's doing? Well, bring your tithes back into the storehouse. What's the storehouse? The church is the storehouse. Bring the full, not partial, tithe into the storehouse. See, God expects a full tithe and not a tip. Right? You bring in $500 a week, a $20 tip is not what God expects. Levites were not taken care of the work at their tabernacle, and it was neglected. Why? Because they were not bringing in the tithes. The Levites had to go out and work. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 13 verse 10 and I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them for the Levites and the singers that did the work were fled everyone to his field they were not supposed to work they were supposed to be in the tabernacle doing the work of God but they couldn't because there was no one bringing in the, the, store, the tithes in the storehouse By them bringing the full tithe into the storehouse, God tells them to prove him with this. That's what he says, prove me, right? See, the fear Israel had then is the same fear today in the life of a believer. Is that they had to trust God would provide for them. It takes faith to give back to him. Because you and I as believers... In our math, 90% doesn't add up being better than 100%, does it? That's just the tithe. That's not give. That's not considering the other off, the offerings. That's just the 10%. That's the basic minimum, right? They had to trust God would provide for them. And God said, if you'll do it, what? I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and shall not destroy the fruits of the ground of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time of the field, saith the Lord of hosts. If you will trust me, I will bless you. If you will trust me and bring the tithes into the storehouse, I'm going to make sure you're taken care of. Hello? That's what God is saying. Prove me. Prove me. See, if Israel would just trust God, then they would not lack anything. If you and I would trust God, we wouldn't lack anything either. We may not have the latest and greatest, right? But we wouldn't lack what we needed. 
nor would they cease to be inferior to any other nation. So the question is, where has God's word warned us in our life that we're not fully acknowledging? He's, listen, he's telling Israel, I'm warning you, if you'll do this, this is the result. If you're, you and I are not doing this, this is the result. But if we do what God is asking us to do, he will provide for us. The question is, is will we acknowledge our sinfulness. Will we acknowledge where we have not been faithful to him? And how will you acknowledge you, that you, you've been deliberately displeasing God? Folks, God gives us choice, doesn't he? Be obedient. Be blessed, be disobedient, be cursed. Will you acknowledge or will you, where have I done wrong, Lord? That's sarcasm, by the way. What are we robbed you? We haven't left, well, I haven't done anything, Lord. Well, yes, you have. He's saying, yes, you have. You and I may not think so, but we have. Have we robbed God by not giving of tithes and offerings? Or have we robbed God in other areas in our life? Where God has said, I want, I want you to give to this, or I want you to give to that, or I want you to participate in this ministry, I want you to help out in this ministry, and you said, no. Nah. That's not for me. Well, if God's asking you to do it, it is for you. God wants you to participate in the ministry. Which, if you're a believer, you should be participating in the ministry. What will you do? I'm not, I'm not in here saying that, uh, that you are robbing God of the tithes and offerings. I'm not telling you that. I'm saying if God, God sees what you are doing and sees what I'm doing, he's the one who's saying it if you are. I'm just a messenger. I'm just a preacher telling you what the Bible says. It's up to you to respond to him. It's up to you. It's your choice. Blessings or curses. That's a choice you have to make. Father, as